Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Betty from Switch and Click and today we'll be reviewing the Re K61C. This thing is absolutely massive. I've been using it for a past couple of days and let's just jump right into the review. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Betty from Switch and Click, and here we dive deep into mechanical keyboards and provide straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard reviews for you guys. So let's jump right into this one, the Re K61C full-size mechanical keyboard with, with linear switches. This is one of the cheapest mechanical keyboards out there available on the internet right now. We bought this for $20, but right now on Amazon, it's currently going for $21. We'll link it down below if you're interested at all in checking out some of its features on Amazon. But 20 bucks, that's the price of two Chipotle burritos and not the chicken ones, but the nice steak or carne asada ones. Is it really worth that much? Let's find out. Okay, so first look, there's already a few things that I'm not totally a fan of. We have this huge, gigantic forehead up here, and we have a interesting feature right here. They call it a cradle. It's to hold your phone, an iPad, pencils, notepads, things like that, if you're gaming, they said. Um, but it's not a wireless keyboard, so I'm not sure why you would want your phone to sit in front of you while you're typing on the computer. Don't you want to see the monitor instead? It makes a lot of sense if you're putting a notepad here and you're typing from the notepad into your computer and you don't want to look down and up too often. That's great. The branding's pretty subtle here at the neck. And then we got the K61C here at the forehead. So full size keyboard massive 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 keyboard the stabilizers are quite loud and uh, we'll do a full typing test at the end of this video if you're interested with these switches but anyways if you look farther we see that we has abs keycaps and then another interesting feature is the enter right here this is an iso layout keyboard it has a, the large enter key and the backslash is in a different location instead so those are a few differences we'll look into the back lights we'll look into all the features like that once we jump right into the keyboard itself but this is just a brief overview all right if we look at the switch these are red linear switches they're unbranded but for the price we're thinking that it's probably otamu which is probably the only switches that you can get for this low price um, but because it's not branded and it doesn't say anywhere we're not 100 percent sure about anything the stabilizers on this keyboard are a little bit strange they're not exactly cherry style stabilizers but they're not exactly co-star stabilizers either Sort of like a weird combination in between they're a bit loud but we'll take a closer look um, into that too some features it has a windows lock key if you press fn and the windows key it has secondary media functions all on the top we have home previous track pause play next track mute volume down volume up and keyboard lock too we can change some of the backlight brightness and some of the frequency with some of the effects. So this keyboard has red linear switches and then it also only has red backlighting as well. But let's plug the keyboard in and look closer at some of these features. Oh, one more interesting thing is the back of the keyboard. Okay, so in the back, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff back here. We got four rubber feet. And then we have four additional keycaps that you can use that say G1, G2, G3, and G4. And you can pull these out and replace any of the keycaps on the front if, you're, if you have macro keys of some sort. And then here we have a keycap puller. 
There we go. Very nice that it's built right into the keyboard. Uh, one complaint I have when I was using the keycap puller is that it seemed to damage the coating of the keycaps, especially these back ones. I tried pulling them out using the puller and it didn't end up so well. It seemed like it was really scratching the paint coat off of the mint green keycaps. And then we have another pretty cool feature here. It has a wire management system, so it can go here or we can go here on this side like that or we can go on the other side too so very cool features here and then as you can see it's got two kickstands but let's plug it in see how it works inside the box you get a manual telling you how it works and all of the different LED lightings, how you record macros, all the different things like that inside the box as well. It goes over what you can press with the FN key to change the features. So macro recording, editing your lighting, things like that. Okay, so here we have the keyboard plugged in. You can see the red backlight quite well. One thing that we'll see here is that it has a floating keycap style design and has a natural incline when you're typing or gaming. It has a brushed aluminum plastic coating over here. The aluminum is actually quite narrow and thin as you can see it starts here and goes right along the top there but it does make the keyboard quite sturdy very difficult to bend and has very minimal flex. Let's go over some of these lighting features that we want to check out. So it's only red and if you press FN and the print screen we have the first one here which is like a breathing or flickering kind and then we have this one where whatever keys you press it'll turn red. And then this one, a little bit different, just a wave from wherever you press. And then this one is like a wave going through this way. And that's it. Those are pretty much all of the effects. You can change the brightness by using FN in the up arrow or the down arrow and turn the lights all the way off and turn them up too. You can change the flickering frequency. I'm not a big fan of flickering, so I don't really do that. But if you're interested, you can you can do that. If you turn on NumLock, we see that it's green here and the other locks are there too. There's keyboard lock right there. Let's look at the some of the legends. All right, so as you can see, the legends are a little bit strange. They're not super clean, not super simple. Some of the some of the things that I really don't like about the legends is in the O key. It looks like left bracket then right bracket instead of just an O. Same thing with zero. The secondary symbols on the numbers are next to the number instead of below, but that lets the lighting shine through quite nicely. One thing that you'll also notice is that the switch housing itself is black and that the LED sits on top right there rather than below it like in some other keyboards and this causes the LED to shine really brightly through the keycap itself but due to the floating keycap style design you can't really see the lighting from underneath like what you see with clear switch housings and with the lighting as part of the PCB itself the printed circuit board and that's when it shines really nicely through you'll see that on some of the some of our other mechanical keyboard reviews such as the HyperX Alloy Origins Core. We'll link that over here. And then we have one for the drop control that has that as well. And we'll link to that here too. And then if you're interested in any one of our other budget mechanical keyboard reviews, we'll link that up there. But let's move on and keep going. Let me put some of these keycaps back. So due to the floating keycap design, it's actually really easy to just pull these keys yourself without really having to use the keycap puller. That's super convenient. And then let's look at the stabilizers. So I did pull this out before, but I thought I broke it because it stopped bouncing up and down, but here we go. Okay, so 
I'll just pull it straight off. As you can see, there's a wire here that goes up and down and then in the space bar itself, you'll see that it has the stem that goes into the switch stem and then these two clip onto the wire. So I guess I would categorize this as CoStar stabilizers. They're just different from other CoStar stabilizers that I've seen where the connection goes into these pieces, these cylinders, instead of uh, into the these clicky things on the side that snap onto the wire. So that's different than what I've experienced, but they're really rattly, they're very loud. They're a lot easier to put on than other keyboards like the Black Razor or the, the Razor Black Widow um, that, ha that has CoStar stabilizers, but very difficult to put back on. Okay, here we go. So pretty loud. If we look here, we have the ISO enter key right there. It's a lot bigger, but it's also farther from where your usual enter key of an ANSI layout keyboard would be instead. So you're reaching a little bit farther with that pinky finger. And if you're okay with that, then that's fine. I personally do not like the ISO layout because of that distance. Instead of just reaching over, I have to physically lift up my hand and go press that enter key. And then I just lose where I am on the keyboard. So that does make it a little different. But if you're totally cool with that and you want an ISO layout keyboard, this is probably one of the few that I've seen online. Honestly, when we ordered it, I didn't even know it would be an ISO layout keyboard. And it was a little bit surprising, to be honest. And despite having the different wire management systems back here, and then on the wire, there's also a Velcro strap that does some wire management. It's still a gigantic keyboard. It's lightweight, but it's just massive. It's basically the length of my entire torso. The forehead's gigantic. I don't really like the cradle. I don't really like this. There's, it has no purpose really. It's like not even a wrist rest. Your hands don't really touch it. The brushed aluminum look is nice. It's very clean, but for $20, I mean, can you really complain about a keyboard with mechanical switches, with anti-ghosting, with anti-key rollover? Like it's, it's, it's hard to complain about something when it's so cheap. It may be a little bit snooty, I suppose, since we've tried a whole lot of mechanical keyboards already and we really know like what makes a quality mechanical keyboard and what doesn't. So honestly, if you only have $20 and it's between going out and buying yourself two Chipotle burritos or going out and buying your first mechanical keyboard ever, I'd probably pick the Chipotle burritos. I love Chipotle, that's me. I would rather save up 30 more dollars and buy myself a nicer mechanical keyboard um, than something like this. It's just not very compact looking, doesn't look clean on my desk. My desk isn't clean in the first place, but it has a certain look to it where this just looks too big. And it's a full size keyboard, so it's massive already, but they only made it even more massive. And it really intrudes into your mouse space if you're gaming, typing, doing work, editing videos things like that. It does have a whole bunch of functions like the secondary media keys, the, the LEDs. It's nice. It's nice. Like don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it's not a bad keyboard at all. It's just for double the price and doubling, doubling $20 isn't too much. So for $50, there's definitely nicer options out there. And we'll provide some of those recommendations up here in our budget mechanical keyboard review. Well, let's jump into a typing test right now. All right, that was the sound test. Tell me what you think. Question of the day, what other mechanical keyboards 
would you guys like us to purchase and review? And then if you want to see a whole playlist of mechanical keyboard reviews made by us, press here. If you want to see another video made by us, press here and then press down here to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.